show on computers. It's Computer America, bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ben Crossman. I hope all of you are having a great day and you are ready for today's program because, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. This program is going to be our E3 roundup, uh, just everything and anything you want to know about E3. We will be in the future directing people to the show if they ask, you know, uh, you know what are our favorites and what did you think and things like that. This will be the show to, uh, to listen to. So to all of you future listeners, to all of you current listeners, thank you for tuning in and happy that you could join us. So joining us on the program today is our longtime gaming correspondent, Mr. Corey Gallagher, who of course writes for PopZera and a couple of other publications. You can find all of those in the show notes at computeramerica.com. And while you're at the website, checking out the show notes and things like that. You can, of course, enter our social media contest brought to you by Logitech. And you can, of course, check out the live video stream, which is hosted at our website, but also at twitch.tv forward slash computer America. So as I said, the whole show today will be dedicated to E3, what went right, what went wrong. And uh, yeah, we're going to do a pretty comprehensive list of, uh, of games to watch out for things we were expecting, things that we weren't, and uh, yes, indeed, we will be talking about uh, Super Smash Brothers, because, my God, that was a, you know, I don't know if that was a shocker to everyone, because I just, I really don't follow, but um, that was really cool to see. So, again, welcome into the program, thank you for joining us, and why don't we go ahead and bring on Corey, just so we can get started. So, once again, Corey Gallagher, Pop Zara, that's where we know him from, but you may know him from the Well Read Mage and a couple other publications. Corey, how you doing? Welcome back onto Computer America. Oh. A little bit of that California jet lag, to be honest. California, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it, but, I mean, of all the conventions to go to, because there's a couple I really follow between PAX, GamesCon, that kind of thing. I mean, E3 is a really good one to really, you know, kind of make time for, isn't it? It is, absolutely. I mean, if you're going to find out what's going on the next year, that's the place you want to be. All right. Yeah. And next year, this year, and in, in the case of some of these, uh, you know, because I saw like the Halo Infinite trailer, which wasn't even a trailer. It was like a game engine demonstration, you know, the next three years, because let's, let's face it, it's going to take them forever to get the next Halo out. But other than that, um, why don't we go ahead and uh, pretend like we have a game plan and let's talk about E3 as a whole because we do this with uh, you know things like CES where every year people come back and they go, eh, that wasn't as good as last year. It's seriously on, on a decline. This may be its last year. Um, you know, Conventions in general are always compared to what happened last year. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and give us your, your impressions of E3? Was this, uh, you know, was this a good event? Did all the players kind of pull their weight? Um, I was not present for last year's E3, but, um, you know, compared to the other ones I've been to, I felt like this one was pretty good. Um, something that Nathan Evans, managing editor of Pop Zara, pointed out is that, uh, there were no hardware reveals. There was a sort of hardware tease from Microsoft talking about the, uh, the Scarlet, but, other than that, we got a real big focus on games this year, and I think that was fantastic. We really got to pay attention to you know what we're going to be playing, what's coming out, what's going to get our attention, instead of being sidelined into, oh, hey, we're bringing out a new box. Here's things that might be out for the box in the next three years. Um, I definitely prefer that kind of show, to be honest. Yeah, it, this was definitely all about not just uh, software and games, but also about developers and you know who bought which developers and what developers are working on, who's teaming up, and that was cool. I mean, when you want to talk about entertainment, the games that you play are infinitely more uh, more interesting than the box you're going to eventually play them on. But I mean, I don't know, hardware wise. 
I feel like with Microsoft teasing Scarlet, and we could you know kind of start there, just see what we know about that. They they teased it. They said that they're working on it. That will be the first iteration, or at least the first generation of a new generation of gaming consoles. Uh, my question to you, and this is going to be obvious to anyone out there who follows, uh, you know, who follows video game console wars and the console numbers. Why do you think Microsoft was the first one to reveal? Uh, because I don't think they're threatened by the Nintendo Switch, but hey, they still tease Scarlet. Why do you think they did that? They didn't really reveal much of anything, to be honest. It's basically just, uh, hey, we're making new hardware. And if you think about it, do we really expect that nobody else is making new hardware right now? I mean, I guarantee you, Nintendo's already got new hardware in the mix, despite the Switch having come out very, very recently. We know for a fact there's going to be a PS5. We know for a fact there's going to be another Xbox One slash Xbox Two slash whatever you want to call it. So it's not really that interesting of a reveal. It's just, uh, hey, we're going to add in a little bit more to our conference. That's about it. Um, Microsoft's conference in particular, um, we saw a whole lot of sequels and uh, we didn't see a lot else. So I kind of feel like we needed to uh, spice up the conference a little. And that's why we saw that reveal. Right. So, uh, yeah, and and so that was a good way for them to spice it up. Now, before we get into specific games, let's go ahead and talk about overall trends because a lot of conventions can really be summed up in a couple of, you know, kind of like really stand out, uh, you know, types of games uh, because Battle Royale, I know one, uh, everywhere. It, just the massive success of the idea of a battle royale, be it 100 players, I think someone teased like a 1,000 player battle royale, uh, but every every indie game, you know, every indie game was a battle royale, a lot of big names had battle royales lined up. Um, that was one that I saw. What were some of the over, you know, overarching themes that you saw coming from, you know, everyone? Well, one of the biggest ones to me, and uh, this is going to be kind of a, a broad stroke, um, I think the return of a beloved franchise was kind of a theme. Um, even when it wasn't beloved, we saw a lot of sequels. Uh, did we ever really think we'd get a Rage 2? I definitely <laughs> didn't, but here we are. Uh, did we think there'd be a Division 2? Here, there, here it is. Poof, it exists. Um, after the DMC, Devil May Cry reboot, uh, did we think that was going to keep going? I wasn't sure, but here it is. Uh, Fallout 76, uh, I guess kind of a survival-ish take on Fallout. You know, we knew there was going to be more Fallout. I didn't think it was going to be this. So um, we didn't see very many new IPs. We mostly just saw uh, beloved franchises coming back. Kingdom Hearts 3 is a big one. Right. Uh, no, that was a huge one. Although some of the uh, new titles that we did see made a lot of, uh, you know, made a lot, of, uh, a, I'm sorry, a huge impact. Uh, notably, uh, 2077, um, I'm trying to think of the specific game. <coughs> sorry. Uh, uh, do you recall which one I'm talking about? I think it's from Ubisoft, I think. Uh, let's see. 2077. Um, Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, that is from CD Projekt Red. That's it. Yeah, that was, and, and, you know, and yes, there were a lot of, uh, you know, reboots, there were a lot of sequels, things like that, but there were some pretty interesting, uh, you know, standalone projects that were announced as well, which was definitely great to see. I mean, as far as games go, this is probably the best E3 I've seen in quite a while. It, they really brought the games, which is great. Absolutely. And like I said, if you're going to a video game show, you want to see video games. You don't necessarily want to hear about the latest box you're going to get to buy that has more games on it. You want to hear about what you're going to have coming in the coming year. And that's what this show gave us. And I think that's fantastic. You know, I am a... I've been on the show a few times, and I think, generally speaking, I'm a bit more optimistic about the industry and what's in it than most people. So um, <laughs> I've never been on board with the whole, you know... There's a rush after a show like this to be the first person to say, oh, it was disappointing, blah, 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 blah. I mean, that's, there, there's cred behind that. I'm not down with that. I think it was a good show. I think we saw a lot of great things, and I'm excited for what I'm going to be playing this coming year. You know, and that's one thing that I've really let myself, uh, you know, kind of become vested in as I've gotten kind of older. Because I used to be, uh, you know, really into the console wars, you know, boo, PlayStation, yay, Xbox, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And I used to put other people down. But now I've learned to really ride the hype train. I mean, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. Of course, you lose a sense of judgment when you do it, but it's, you know, kind of the enjoyment of video games is half the time just being like, wow, that looks really exciting. I can't wait. 
that's uh, that's something that I'm definitely trying to do more so when it comes to you know more video games, not just yeah, that's probably going to be crap. It's uh, wow, I can't wait to play that. I think it's I think it's a lot more fun to enjoy playing games than to uh, look for different reasons why they don't live up to your standards. That's exactly. just me. Exactly. So uh, so overarching themes, uh, and I don't I really don't see anything wrong with uh, rebooting old beloved projects, things that maybe people still look back fondly on and say, "Wow, I wish they came out with a modern version of that." And hey, that was great. So uh, let's see. Uh, anything that you didn't like about the show uh, was the coffee cold. Was uh, was were, were the rooms too cold? I mean, anything about E three kind of in general that you didn't like? Um, one of the big things I was concerned about, and I'm actually going to kind of warp, uh, twist your question around here. Um, I was really concerned. Uh, last year, when they introduced the gamer pass, which is where you can drop a certain amount of money. I think it's around seven hundred dollars, and you'll get a pass that lets you into the show you can't get into certain areas but you can go around and like wait in line to play games and if that's what you want to do and just kind of uh, treat it like it's a con and right. um my concern is that a lot of people would have these and it would make it difficult to get things done um in reality i mean the show's always crowded and i didn't think it was especially bad compared to any other con or any other show um so it wasn't a big deal um I actually, uh, when I went, I took a shadow with me, uh, Nia Bothwell from Pop Zara. She was kind of learning how to cover a show like this. Uh, she actually had a gamer pass. So I got to experience a little of uh, what it's like to try to get things done if that's all you have. And uh, it's difficult. You know, without me there helping her, um, there would have been a lot of waiting. Uh, there would have been a lot of not getting stuff done. There would have been a lot of, um, just, just for reference, there's a place called the Concourse Hall, which is where a lot of the meeting rooms are. Uh, she could not actually get in there without having a PR person. I couldn't even do it myself. Had to have somebody from PR escort her inside. It was a pain in the butt. Um, so if you're trying to get work done, you definitely want a media badge. If you just want to go to a con, I, I guess you can just drop that much money on it. I mean, I, I don't think it's worth it. Right. If you ask me, if you're not going to get work done, I don't think it's worth it to pay to go. But – for a lot of people, it's a dream, and I guess they can make that dream happen now if their dream is to wait in line for an hour to play Call of Duty for five minutes. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of these conventions uh, and, you know, the only really major one that I've ever experienced is CES. But as an average person just kind of going to experience the show, I mean, really, I, and I don't, I'm not sure if it's the same for E3 because, you know, people really, really love their video games. But it's like. Yeah, you can get in. Yeah, you can probably shake the hand of of a, of a of a developer, but you know, then what are you gonna say? It's like, hey, love your games, and then they're gonna go, okay, thanks for stopping by. Like, you know, you're not gonna write an article about it. You're not gonna do a podcast. You're not going to review something for them later. Like, you're just saying, you know, I'm a fan. Thanks for doing what you do, and that's almost the end of your interaction at E3. So. But you said that it was pretty crowded. I, I mean, so I guess the whole the whole spit on this is that not that it provides any kind of benefit to the gaming industry, but more it makes E3 more profitable so that they can continue to do this in the future. It, is that pretty much the, the gist of why they started doing this? Uh, you know, I don't really pay much attention to the business side of this particular show, but um, I would guess, yeah, that that's correct. Um, there was a lot of talk a few years ago about uh, this is going to be the last E3, E3 is not going to be a thing anymore, yada, right. yada, yada. Um, I've been three times now, I've seen no indication that that's actually anything but Doom saying. Okay. Um, and like I mentioned, it was a crowded show even back before they let Gamer Passes come in. So, I, you know, honestly, if you were, if you did have to wait in line, the lines were probably longer. If you were trying to get food inside the show or whatever, the lines were probably longer. But you could still do it. And going as media, you know, I had appointments. I had things to do. So. Right. I, I wasn't waiting in lines anyway. I was going to appointments. I was doing my job. So, okay, no, great. All right. So, uh, so overall impression, you know, still E three, great conference, uh, great conference. Why don't we go ahead and start talking about uh, each of the individual kind of keynotes, and then we'll do kind of a recap on uh, you know on the on the video games and make sure we hit all of everything. Uh, let's go ahead at, actually, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you start because I have kind of every one of the keynotes here queued up. Um, any that really stood out to you, any that said, wow, they kind of won the whole thing. If you, as if you can win a media event. Um, you know, there weren't really any show stopping reveals this time. It was a lot of stuff that we kind of saw coming. Um, you know, if we had to say one particular game that probably blew the rest out of the water, um, maybe Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. But even then, we kind of knew there was going to be a new Smash Brothers on Switch. Like that's 
Not a surprise. The form that it took where it has every character from every game in the Smash series, that's a little unique. But yeah, if it was one game, maybe that. Um, in terms of what I actually got to play, though, which is a significant thing, um, you'll be surprised. Pokemon Let's Go was probably <laughs> uh, that. Yeah, that or Starlink are the games that I think are going to really make a difference this coming year. I'm surprised you didn't say it was Skyrim for Alexa. That was uh, that was a real showstopper for me. That was. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. That was solid, but right now, uh, all right. So Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, obviously, I think people are very familiar with Pokemon Go. It went sure. viral about a year or two ago. Uh, Pokemon yep. Let's Go. That this is going to be a bit different. Talk about what that is because it's Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, two different versions. What is it? Does it have any tie-ins with Pokemon Go? And why did you like it so much? Uh, Pokemon Let's Go is basically a Switch take on Pokemon Go. The idea being that you're uh, you're kind of replaying the very first game in the series, which I believe was released almost two decades ago, if not more at this point. And um, you capture wild Pokemon using the same system you have in Pokemon Go, where you physically throw your Pokeballs at them. Um and when you encounter trainers, you fight them using the standard Pokemon battle system. It's a really neat combination. Um, a lot of people liked Pokemon Go. A lot of people still do. You know, people say it's dead. Definitely not dead. You can still go out and see people playing it. Uh, right. It's still got a big, oh, vibrant there, community around it. There was, uh, and, and hey, I mean, even like a month ago, there was that uh, that kid that was thankfully saved. I think he was in France hanging off of a balcony. Uh, you know, uh, an immigrant came up and climbed like you know, four stories, got the kid off, you know, hanging off the band, uh, hanging off the balcony. And the news report said, what was the parent doing? And he's like, the parent was sitting inside playing Pokemon Go. And I'm like, that's how you know that game is still alive. It's still putting kids in jeopardy to catch those Pokemon. You know, it's alive. Exactly. I mean, if a game is killing people, you know, it's doing well. Look at Fortnite. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And it's, it's a great combination. It's good for casual players. I think it's going to be good for more advanced players. Um, my favorite aspect of it was the new controller it comes with, which is a little Pokeball shaped sphere. You hold it in your hands about the size of, I guess, a golf ball has an analog stick on top and a button on the front. You don't need anything else to play this game. It's very relaxed, very chill. Pokemon go, uh, Pokemon let's go also has multiplayer. I believe it's the first for the series, which is fantastic. All in all, um, I was expecting some crap spinoff, you know, again, I try to be optimistic, but this is what it looked like to me. And yet I come in, I give it a shot myself. It feels great. It's fun to play. Looking forward to getting a copy of my own. And I guess, and, and obviously this is going to be for the Nintendo Switch. And I think this is one thing that a lot of people are getting excited about was that up until this point, Nintendo Switch had not any kind of standalone Pokemon games. So they also announced like that little Pokemon uh, Pokeball kind of deal. Um I, I mean, what was that? Because I've heard some people were like, yeah, this is for like a, you know, this is like a pedometer. It's going to tell how often you walk. It's going to get kids active. And it's just going to be like a kind of wonky Nintendo toy controller. Um, was there anything to say about, you know, kind of Nintendo's hardware mix in for this? Uh, it's the, the thing I just talked about. The oh, little, yeah. Uh, sphere, yeah, yeah. The spherical controller. You, you hold it in the palm of your hand. Right. And, uh. It's got an analog stick on top, you move it with your thumb, and uh, that's all you need to play the game. When you're actually trying to catch Pokemon, you make the throwing motion, the ball goes out. It's really cool. Feels great to play it. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so Pokemon Go look great. At, uh, that's definitely great. Let's uh, talk about Nintendo's entire kind of conference then. And Nintendo, I think more than anyone, they took a more kind of measured approach because everything about theirs was videotape. And I'm not really truly familiar with Nintendo's keynotes before this, but they were videotaped beforehand. Uh, no, nothing really live or unexpected. Um, but at the same time, they did, you know, kind of focus on the games. And that was a lot of fun to see. Let's talk about, you know, another big Nintendo reveal, as you mentioned, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, uh, you know, like you said, that one more than any other game, I think was just talked about more, like maybe not, you know, uh, you know, may maybe not the absolute best, the favorite, but that one was the internet exploded with uh there was uh, some some crazy uh super metroid uh, enemy that was included things like that i mean talk about super smash brothers ultimate why it had so much attention and why people were liking it 
I mean, it's a new Smash game on a new Nintendo console. <laughs> I'm not really sure what else you need. Um, people were excited about this one because it brings back a lot of characters we didn't think we'd see again. Uh, the Ice Climbers, for instance, who have been out of action for a while. Uh, the big one was Solid Snake, who was part of a big licensing deal. You know, we didn't think he was going to be back at all. Here he is. We can finally have a big fight between Mario, Sonic, Snake, and I guess Mega Man again. That's pretty cool. Um, You'll see a little bit of a uh, little bit of dissent about it because it doesn't seem to introduce a lot of new characters right now. I've got the inkling from Splato- uh, the inkling from Splatoon, mm-hmm. sorry, and uh, Ridley from the Metroid series. That's it. Uh, yeah, I got a chance to play as them both when I was demoing the game, and they're both fantastic. Um, in terms of how it plays, what it looks like, et cetera, et cetera, it is a Smash game. You know what it's like. Uh, I don't need to explain it to you. If I do. Uh, <laughs> It is a party ga- uh, party slash fighting game. You knock each other around, try to knock each other off the stage. Uh, real easy to pick up, real hard to master. I have met very few people who don't enjoy Smash Brothers. If you haven't tried it yet, please do when this comes out. And um, in terms of games that were talked about at the show, yeah, no, I think this is one of the bigger ones. Um, again, I think a lot of us were maybe expecting a game with a little bit more original content, uh, maybe less focus on the returning characters, but it's still pretty cool to me. Right, and there's always this talk about what's going to be the next big eSport. That is something that we're seeing, you know, batted around. It's uh, because if you can turn your game into an eSport with constant updates, with constant audience engagement, with a pro scene, things like that, your game suddenly doesn't become, you know, popular for six months. It becomes popular year in and year out, and you kind of find a formula for a continuous flow of cash in... You know, really in an industry that for a lot of games, after six months to a year, unless it's on sale, people really don't look at it once again. Um, so the talk of esports always a thing. And I think Super Smash Brothers on a number of consoles, those have all like th- those were like kind of the original esports. Like people go to uh, tournaments, they go to land tournaments to compete in them. Uh, it's always a lot of fun to watch. It's great as a spectator sport. And I think Nintendo really is hoping that Super Smash Brothers Ultimate kind of become, you know, becomes Nintendo's kind of first eSport. Do you think something like that is possible? Do you think eSports are something worth noting? Uh, and how, how do you think Nintendo is approaching this? I mean, it's pretty clear by now that eSports have definitely taken off. They're definitely a thing. It's a little bit hard to deny that they're a thing at this point. If you look at League, if you look at Dota... If you even look at things like fighting games, obviously esports, they, they, it's happened. It's here. Um, as far as Nintendo esports go, um, when the Switch was first announced, one of the things we saw in that trailer was a bunch of people in an arena using Switches to play Splatoon. So clearly Nintendo is interested in the idea. Uh, whether or not they're planning to pull it off with Smash Ultimate, hard to say. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. Nintendo tends to do things the way they want to do things. We can't really predict how they're going to handle it, but we'll see. Absolutely. So yeah, we'll definitely see what happens there. Uh, since we're on Nintendo, why don't we go ahead and go through some of the, uh, you know, actually some, if not all of the games that they, you know, kind of talked about there. And, you know, Nintendo, it's one of those things because they're a gaming company, kind of like Sony, that they're from a different region. So a lot of their announcements uh at the convention like you could kind of hear it when like a pokemon game come came up the audience lost their mind when a super smash brothers came up the audience lost their mind and then when some of the more niche uh you know maybe not maybe regional games came up there were like four people that were like oh yay finally a new fire emblem three houses um you know games like that so nintendo had a few of those Let's, uh, you know, let me know if any of these kind of catch your ear as one that you were re- really looking forward to. Let's see. There was a Damon X, uh, Damon X Machina. There was Killer Queen Black, both of which are, and, and Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 2 DLC. I mean, all three of those, they're kind of, uh, you know, J, uh, J role-playing game or Japanese role-playing games or, uh, you know, arcade killer games again kind of more popular overseas pokemon quest um that was let's see that was uh the free-to-play pokemon game was announced at launch during the nintendo briefing and reimagines the iconic creatures in a cubic art style pokemon quest i don't quite remember that one so pokemon quest is actually out now this is basically a more uh mobile style game it's a little bit simpler um 
Yeah, I haven't actually tried it myself, to be honest, but the fact is it's out now. If you want to try it, go ahead and try it. Yeah, it looks almost Minecraft-esque. So, hey, but it, it's a freebie. So, let's see, there was Pokemon uh, Let's Go, Pikachu and Eevee. We talked about that. Speaking of a series that was beloved and they brought it back, Super Mario Party. You know, that's... Um, th- they announced a new Super Mario Party. They said it's going to come out in October, October 5th, 2018. And it's going to use, of course, the Switch. And it's going to use the Joy-Cons, things like that. I mean, people loved Super Mario Party just as much as they loved uh, you know, Super Smash Brothers. It was one of those games that a lot of people enjoy from their childhood. And I don't know, I was happy and yet surprised that they brought it back. You know, they have, uh, they've made a Mario Party for every Nintendo console. It's kind of a standby franchise. What really got me about this trailer for Super Mario Party is uh, I did not realize the Switch was capable of the kind of things that it was showing off in this trailer. For instance, uh, you put multiple Switch screens together. Characters can transfer from one to the other. That's a fantastic idea. It also means you got to have multiple Switches purchased to make it happen. But still, cool, awesome. Yeah, no, and and yeah, I, I remember exactly what you're talking about. You kind of had to set up the level to how you wanted to play on it, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So very cool to see that. Uh, Fortnite, of course, that's uh, coming out on everything. So Fortnite was announced for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, let's see, there was Overcooked Two. Hmm. So yeah, I don't I don't really recall that one at all. Um, you're, not familiar, you're not familiar with Overcooked. Overcooked is a fantastic couch co-op game. I have never played it, and I don't even... Uh, at, all right, so just give me an overview. Overcooked to Excited? Uh, were you happy to see that? I, I absolutely was. Overcooked, um, if you haven't played it, which is in the song we have, Overcooked is basically uh, you've got the four players, and they're playing as chefs, and uh, they have to work together to make dishes and get them out to customers before the customers get upset and walk out or refuse to pay or whatever. Um, it's a good way to make your friends hate you, uh, much <laughs> like Mario Party. So, okay. um, like, you know, naturally, I'm super hyped for Overcooked, too. Okay, so Overcooked 2, it's, uh, that's going to come out here soon in the next month or two. Uh, a new Hollow Knight, and hey, that's, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. So let's see, Splatoon, uh, Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. So obviously Splatoon has turned into, you know, we were talking about esports. Splatoon 2 has really turned into their uh, another possible esport candidate for Nintendo, and they're really, you know, they're, I, I think they're really happy with the performance of that whole franchise, so nothing should be unexpected about them expanding that whole, uh, you know, that whole idea. So let's see, Arena of Valor, whatever, Minecraft um, coming to Nintendo Switch June twenty first. So, man, that is a game that just will not die. Good for Minecraft. Um, let's see, let's see, some of these, um, you know, just kind of looking through some of these. Ark Survival Evolved. That was let's see i think that was a game that kind of fell flat on its face because people were uh it came it took a while to come out when it finally did did come out i think the gameplay was a little repetitive and then they fixed it in later dlcs but arc survival evolved coming to nintendo switch um nintendo and you know this is this isn't e3 but this is overall nintendo's really opening themselves up to third parties like a lot of games are getting some ports, and that's that's kind of cool to see, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, with Ark in particular, um, you know, I remember getting a review copy of Ark back when it first in early access. Um, I have a, a pretty beefy video card, and the game barely ran. So the fact that they've managed to optimize it enough to put it on the Switch, um, it's also on mobile now, by the way. It looks great, runs great on mobile. Uh, that's impressive. Right. Right, so uh, let's go. All right, so there was that one, um, and you know we're running out of Nintendo here. By the way, we're going to take a break here in just a minute, and then we'll be right back. But uh, let's wrap up Nintendo Wasteland Two Paladins. Um, yeah, they had a Paladins trailer. I don't think anyone was kind of excited about that, but hey, good for Paladins. Uh, SNK Heroines Tag Team Fantasy and The World Ends With You Final Remix. So that was another one. It was a 2008 Nintendo DS game that is getting a reboot um, or at least a, uh, you know, kind of a sprucing up for 2018. So, I mean, overall, Nintendo, they they brought the games, right? Absolutely. Like I said, that's pretty much what every company did. Um, out of the last few we mentioned there, uh, Paladins coming out on Switch is really cool. It's a solid game, somewhat similar to Overwatch. If you're into that, I mean, there it is. Overwatch is not on Switch, 
So they're kind of filling in a niche. Um, I'm honestly a little bit surprised we didn't see Overwatch on Switch, by the way. I, I really expected that was going to happen. Hmm. It didn't. Uh, SNK Heroines Tag Team Fantasy. I got a chance to play that at NIS's booth during E3. Um, and it's interesting to bring it out on Switch because it's very Well, actually, uh, Corey, we, yeah, we're going to have to stop right there. Everyone, we'll be right back. Computer America, Corey Gallagher, Pop Zara. Everyone, stay tuned. Greece is cheap. But the airfare costs a fortune. Paris? Not much closer. And again, airfare. What about Puerto Vallarta? Let's face it, flying anywhere is just too expensive. Wait, what's this? Low-cost airlines. With one call to low-cost airlines, you'll drastically slash your travel costs. We're talking insanely low airline prices to any of your favorite destinations. Where would you like to go? London, Rome, Costa Rica, Australia? Wow, that's cheap. So why wait? Call now to learn how crazy cheap it is to fly anywhere in the U.S. or international. Our prices are so low, we can't publish them. The only way to get them is to call to instantly hear the most amazing best deals on airlines travel. It's that easy. So call now and start packing. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. 800-215-4461. That's 800-215-4461. We are all Brother Wolf. Ten years ago, a group of locals banded together to create positive change. We took animals into our homes, held adoption events at local retailers, and talked to the community about our mission to help build a no-kill Asheville. A decade later, we have achieved so many victories for animals in need. There's been so much progress, yet there's still so much to do. As part of our year-long celebration, we encourage you to become a member of our special Compassionate Circle program. With a monthly donation of $10 or more, you will have behind-the-scenes access to the work we are doing at Brother Wolf. Our goal is to reach 1,000 members because we receive no government funding. Working together, we can help build and sustain no-kill communities. Learn more at CompassionateCircle.BWAR.org. We are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization. And welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is, let's see, there we go. It is uh, 32 minutes past the hour as we continue on here. And we are doing everything about E3. This will be our summation of the show. And I think that we are, you know, kind of on the, you know, uh, uh, we're about a week away, and I feel comfortable saying that this was uh, everything that came out. I know that doing live, up-to-date coverage can be kind of hard, and it's uh, you know very exciting. But there's also some misinformation that can happen, so I'm very comfortable doing it about this time. And hey, it's uh, it, so far it's going great, and I'll, contributing a lot to that is of course our correspondent, ga uh, a gaming correspondent, Corey Gallagher from Popsara. So. Corey, again, thank you for continuing on with us. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you have a second to finish up, um, you know, the Nintendo thing. I think you were talking about the SNK heroines. Right. I was uh, a little bit surprised that they're bringing this out on Switch because it's honestly a very Smash-ass game. It's kind of a simpler fighting game, uh, kind of intended for beginners, easy to pick up, hard to master. fills the exact same niche as Smash. Yet here we are. Um, I had a chance to play it. It's a good time. Um, maybe a little heavy on the fan service. Not so fond of that. <laughs> not really. Don't really like being pandered to, and that's what this game does. But there it is. And uh, the last one we talked about was uh, the World Ends with You final remix. That's a uh, remaster of an old game from 2008 uh, called, obviously, the World Ends with You. A really, really solid game. If you haven't played it, uh, get it on DS. It's probably cheap. Get it on mobile. It's probably very cheap. Uh, what we're almost certainly going to see here is a. Uh, improved port of the mobile version but we'll see okay uh, so all in all yeah i mean all in all i think nintendo did pretty good nintendo did pretty darn good and hey you know that's uh that's something to be expected so uh nintendo let's say uh that's wrapped up let's go ahead and move on to uh you know one that was kind of uh you know kind of late on titles but still uh, a lot of talk and a lot of buzz. Let's talk about Activision real quick. So Activision, only four titles announced. And don't forget that some of these titles were announced, you know, maybe they were made by Activision, but they fell under maybe the Xbox conference or the PC gaming conference, things like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about these. So uh, 
one of these, and I've never, uh, and I think this is uh, uh, this is a standalone project. But Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and it's like a Jap- and it's like a swordsman samurai kind of deal, and it's a third part. It's a third person action game, entirely on brand from the acclaimed Japanese studio. So. Yeah, and that one's coming out for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Uh, Shadows Die Twice. Anything, anything to say there other than it looks like a you know one of those you know kind of fun action-based games? So the original uh, trailer slash teaser for Sekiro was um, we actually thought it was Bloodborne two originally. Uh, it's not. It is in fact that it's not a Souls game. It's not a Bloodborne game. It is its own ser- uh, own new franchise. Um, it is uh, not an RPG. It is an action game, which is interesting because we really would have expected yet another action RPG along the lines of a Soulsborne game. It's not. Uh, I wasn't disappointed. Looks good to me. I think, I think it'll be a good time. Uh, the fact that it was announced and it kind of came out of nowhere is interesting. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Right. All right. So let's see. There was that one and uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Uh, Call of Duty, they are sticking to their guns. They are, you know, they're on this, um, you know, kind of schedule. I think every every year they swap off uh, developers. They have a different developer for, like, Black Ops versus uh, Call of Duty, you know, uh, like the, uh, they did, like, a World War II one. And this time we get a new Black Ops. Um, yeah, I think people are just going to be kind of happy about that. But I'm pretty sure Call of Duty, this one, is going to include, or maybe it was Battlefield. I don't know if Call of Duty did. I know Battlefield, I think they did. A Battle Royale mode, is essentially is what, is what I'm getting at. Where they're adapting existing titles into having a version of Battle Royale. Was that Call of Duty or Battlefield? I, I, I don't recall. Uh, Battlefield is the one that has a uh, Battle Royale mode coming. We that actually one. got a chance to, yeah, we actually got a chance to try out uh, Black Ops 43. Um what I thought was going to be a private appointment where we just sat and talked to some devs and maybe, uh, you know, just maybe got a little bit of hands-on time. That actually turned into a, hey, we are going to sit in front of a big chunk of the show and play the game right in front of them. Uh, <laughs> my perf- my performance was not amazing. I think my KDR was like 1.05, which is not great. Hey, it's <laughs> above, but that's above one. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, that's not congratulations. That's please try <laughs> harder. Um, but it was a good time. Uh, the big thing about this one is that there's not going to be a single player campaign. So that's rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. Personally, I, I don't really mind. I mean, Overwatch doesn't have one, and that's doing pretty well. PUBG doesn't have one. That's doing pretty well. Uh, for a Call of Duty game, it's unusual. Maybe it's a step back. I... Still look forward to playing it. I think it's going to be fun. We'll see how it goes, as I keep saying. Uh, a lot of these things are not far enough along yet to really say if they're going to blow our minds and they come out or not but um i i think we can say with certainty that we have enough experience and money behind the call of duty series that black ops 4 is not going to be too terrible right no nope. and that i think is the uh is their official motto motto is that uh call of duty the next one not not that bad and uh and that's gonna be okay and and by the way i, I believe your assistant here is uh in the chat room talking about how they had to carry your sorry but so um yeah that's correct yes <laughs> yeah so so i believe uh there you go try better all right so there's call of duty uh, again we're doing activision right now and uh destiny 2 forsaken that one uh you know destiny has its own channels that they release a lot of news from so i don't think any of this was really news news when it came out at e3 but destiny 2 forsaken um, looks to be fixing a few things and at the same time looks to be ignoring a couple things that the community has been asking for. Uh, you know, Destiny in general, how I feel about it is that Destiny gets a lot of things wrong in the first iteration, in the first expansion, but then they fix a lot of things. So if you have never played Destiny 2 and you've been waiting, um, I think Destiny 2 Forsaken looks like a great time to jump in for your first time. I don't think it's going to fix everything you uh, you dislike about it, but if you've never played Destiny 2, the new expansion looks really good to, you know, kind of get your toes wet. You know, with Destiny 2, I say that every time. Uh, war, you know, Warmind, oh, man, this is a great time to play Destiny 2. It's definitely a great game now. Uh, we look at Curse of Osiris. Oh, the first expansion's out. It's a great game now. It's a good time to get started. I've learned that it's a good idea to maybe take a step back, let it release first, see some reviews before we get excited. 
Right, exactly. And uh, there's something to riding the hype train, and then there's something to, uh, you know, going in you know, going in with uh, rose-colored glasses. But the last one, uh, speaking of titles that are, uh, let's see, Spyro Reignited. So Spyro is one of those games that if you had a Nintendo 64 or GameCube, if you had uh, any of those earlier N- Nintendo consoles, I mean, they... People love Spyro. Spyro has a special place, kind of like ba- uh, Crash Bandicoot, and people love it. So Spyro, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, what do you think about it? Honestly, uh, I think I'm one of the very, very few people who did not play Spyro as a kid. So in my case, I'm approaching this from a different perspective than most people. I'm pretty hyped to play these games for the first time. Yeah, you know, and I... I, I didn't eat like the only time I played it was when I, when I went to a friend's house and they had it for their console and that was like the one like that one and Star Fox were the only ones he'd never let me borrow because he loved them so much he didn't trust me which you know I kind of don't blame them they're great titles so Spyro reignited uh, very very cool and I hope that we see some you know some new uh, IP coming out from Spyro because it has a lot of kind of gamer goodwill. So that was Activision, uh, you know, again, kind of light on the titles, but they did have a lot of, uh, a lot of cool ones. Uh, EA. Now, EA is one of those companies that I think they come out with really, really cool titles. And at the same time, everyone looks at the, at the distributor, everyone looks at EA and says, how are they going to bleep this up? How are they going to mess this up? And it's, it's, you know, kind of going in being really excited and then saying, but it's EA. That happened a lot with a lot of titles I heard announced out there. So let's uh, let's kind of work our way down the list. Uh, one of the biggest disappointments, uh, Command and Conquer Rivals. You know, all these different franchises are getting the reboot. They're They're getting a new game that, you know, they put a lot of effort into. And then people heard, Command and Conquer, the crowd goes wild. Rivals, uh, questionable. And they're like, only for iOS and Android. And they're like, wow, way to officially put the nail in that coffin, EA. Uh, what do you think about Command & Conquer's Rivals? Uh, you know, I really don't have a lot of the uh, the fond memories of Command & Conquer. When I, get into, when I get into RTS games, it was with Warcraft 3. So that was a little bit before my time. Um, my favorite Command & Conquer game was actually Renegade, the third-person shooter. So I can't really speak much to that. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, don't, the, don't sound so yeah. disappointed. Come on. Uh, well, well, I, I mean, uh, Command and Conquer. Like the only experience I have with it was, you know, I I played uh, Warcraft, Starcraft, that kind of thing, and I believe I got uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert, and there may have been like an expansion or two in there, but that was one that I kind of got on sale at when you actually had to go to like Costco and they had all the uh, you know all the boxes of software sitting there. It was on sale for like a lot, and you know my mom bought it for me. And I liked it. It, it. As far as real-time strategy goes, it it was one of the OGs, and you know uh, people really liked it. But then it died a slow, painful death, and its and its user community, I don't think ever kind of got the you know kind of got the closure that they wanted. And so they heard Command and Conquer were coming back out. They're like, all right, we're going back to our roots, real-time strategy. And then they said mobile, and everyone said, why do you hate SEA? Why do you hate your user base? So, I, I mean, mobile has obviously become an area that they want to explore. I, I think it was a Bethesda's keynote. It was either Bethesda or Ubisoft. But they said that they, you know, one of their mobile, t- or one of the titles that they brought out on mobile had more plays than any, than all the other games in the series put together like mobile's huge so i guess they're trying to find another franchise to bring onto mobile that makes sense so maybe that's command and conquer um again mixed with the fact that ea is developing it i think people were a bit you know kind of on edge over the whole thing Right. I can understand that. Absolutely. You know, especially after that whole Dungeon Keeper fiasco. Yeah. Nah. All right. So uh, another one that uh, people were obviously super excited for Star Wars. Uh, Ever since Disney took over the rights and they've made movie after movie, people have been super excited about it. Uh, Jedi had a couple of um, let's see. Jedi had, had a couple of games that they were 
you know, that people really loved, like uh, Jedi Academy, Jedi uh, The Force Awaken, or, or something like that. Uh, no, no, that, uh, that was a movie. Uh, but Jedi Academy, things like that, they had games people really enjoyed. And so this is another one that it's a little more than a promise. That's, that's what they said, because it's coming out the holiday of next year, so holiday 2019. But Jedi Fallen Order was announced, and, it, and they said it's... Uh, yeah, they said it has potential, but we don't know too much about it. I think they said it was going to be a story-driven kind of RPG uh, Jedi game. So that's exciting. Again, yeah, there's not a lot to it right now. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much all we got. Yeah. And as far as, EA, as far as EA goes, I mean, they definitely had some pretty impressive announcements. Obviously, uh, the one we really care about, you know, the rest of this is all window dressing. There's two big ones. Uh, there's Battlefield Five. That's cool. It's got a battle royale mode. Looks amazing. Can't wait to play it. I love battle royale games. We've talked about this in the show before. I'm a big fan. I think you're a little bit, you're a little bit less so. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Uh, uh, Call of Duty myself. So eh. right, absolutely. Yeah. No, I think Battlefield Five is looking great. Uh, the big thing for me, and I think for a lot of people who watch EA, uh, we got to see a lot of stuff from Anthem. Anthem looks amazing. I am. Uh, just 100% first day, please sign me up. I cannot wait to play Anthem. You know, I've been into this since I saw it for, for, for the first time last year. It looks amazing. Uh, just it, really, you know, yeah. I'm hoping it nails what Destiny kind of tries to do and exactly. doesn't really pull it off. Exactly. It, it, it's going to be a, a Destiny competitor. And really, I, I think it, it's it, there's an itch that people have that no one is quite scratching and they're like, we want to shoot them up. We want a dungeon looter that just throws hordes of loot at you. And you get to just kind of feel rewarded and you get to play and it's multiplayer. So hopefully Anthem becomes that, uh, you know, there you go. And the other, and the only one I would, uh, you know, kind of otherwise mention uh, from EA would be their first Madden game in quite a while. And well, uh, yeah, so they, they had, you know, uh, they're obviously their sports games, their FIFAs, their NHLs, what have you. But um, a new Madden game, that's pretty darn cool, even if it is just on mobile. So pretty darn cool there. All right. So Absolutely. Let, yep. So let's go ahead. Now, one that caught me so off guard because I just played this with my friends about three years ago. And, you know, that, it's not that long. But three years ago, we all played Battletoads together. And I was like... What a great game. That was fun. I never thought anything more of it. I never I never wrote Microsoft a letter and said, you need to bring Battletoads back. And then guess what they did? They brought Battletoads back. What do you think about that? You know, we kind of saw it coming. If you looked at Killer Instinct last year, uh, one of the guest characters they added was a Battletoad. So obviously they were doing some work on uh, some kind of Battletoads related thing. And now here we are. Uh, does my real question though, have you, have you, did you play Battletoads in the NES? Uh, uh, wait, uh, I played it on the Xbox store. It was on sale and we, yeah, we, we played on Xbox. I never played like the original Battletoads way back when. And, uh, what did you think about it? Cause, uh, people have a lot of fondness for Battletoads. Battletoads hates you. Battletoads <laughs> does not want you. Battletoads is not the nice game people seem to remember it as. Well, well again, I, I just played it a couple years ago, and, you know, maybe it was a bit different for the Xbox 360, but, I mean, as far as, you know, kind of put things on screens and hopefully you and your friends survive, it it was one of my favorites, really. It was, um, I, I, I definitely enjoyed it. So I, I think that Battletoads might have some nostalgia going for it, but there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, let's go ahead and, you know, try to, yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and by the way, uh, yeah, as the people in the chat room said, maybe you have some very not so fond memories of dying too often. So I'm sorry to hear that, Grayson, or Grayson, holy cow, I am so sorry. Corey Gallagher, everyone, pop Zara. So um, let's go ahead and talk about, let's see some of these other ones. Um, let's see, don't care about Gears Pop, Gears Tactics, whatever. Uh, Gears of War 5. This is another one I didn't really, I, and I don't know why I didn't expect it. Gears of War 5, what'd you think? Uh, I was honestly stunned that for the first time we are not playing as a big muscly, uh, muscle, 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 muscle. Uh, we're playing as Kate from Gears of War 4, which is really cool if you ask me. Uh, as far as the gameplay we've seen and what it looks like, it's more Gears. People like Gears, 
I like gears. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it's a it's a winning formula. You don't have to change it up much. I mean, if you look at a uh, look at third person shooters from around the time the Xbox 360 launched, you'll notice that they all started playing a lot like Gears of War. That's because yeah. it's a formula that works. Yeah, it it certainly does. And this one uh, does kind of go back to uh, you know it has a bit of that story to it. it you know, we're all going back to the beginning. Uh, so I think people who like the Gears franchise, because I know a couple of people who actually like the Gears franchise, like as just as a standalone thing, I think they're going to be really excited for, you know, for that whole thing. So there's that one. Absolutely. Uh, yep. So there's that one. I definitely want to mention Halo Infinite. So like I said, Halo Infinite, one of those games that it wasn't necessarily Halo. Like, like you saw Master Chief, you saw his helmet, it was a teaser, and at the bottom in big letters it said game engine demonstration. That just leads me to believe they are so far away from a game, they can't they, they haven't even written the story yet. They have the artist working on it and that's it. Um what do you think about you know what little Halo we got? <laughs> I mean, you pretty much just ran it down. It's it's an engine demo. Um it looked cool. That's all we got. <laughs> Yeah. So, all right. So, Halo Infinite. I, I'm. I would hate, hate, hate to think that Halo Six is going to be the first game that comes with Xbox Scarlet. I would hate to think that that's how long we have to wait for another Halo game. But hey, it's whatever. Uh, Tunic. So, Tunic. It was an indie uh, indie developer. As I said, it's uh, you know kind of like Legend of Zelda. Kind of like. Um, you know, one of those things, it's, it's definitely an indie game. It's kind of, uh, uh, let's see, it uses a certain kind of, I would say source engine, but there's a certain kind of game engine it uses that it's pretty cool, but at the same time, I think it's just a port, you know, it, it's already been played and it's just come to Xbox overall. That's one thing that Xbox really struck, you know, struck me was that, I think they bragged that they bought like four studios and they have a lot more games coming out. I mean, if you had the problem of Xbox not having enough games or exclusives, I think Microsoft heard you and they're really ramping up paying for a lot more developers and a lot more game studios to put out games on Xbox. What do you think about that as a whole? See, the thing with the Xbox is that it's a really great choice if you don't have a gaming PC. Because a lot of the stuff you can play on Xbox, you can also play on PC, and you can get higher fidelity, you can get better graphics, you can get more peripherals, it probably controls better. If you don't have a gaming PC, it's probably the best option for the best looking versions of these games. So with that in mind, it's nice to see a lot more Microsoft-specific games. Um, I was super hyped to see a sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest. That was a favorite game of mine from back in the day. Mm -hmm. I, back in the day, like, what, three years ago? <laughs> and, um, of course, uh, Crackdown 3 got delayed yet again. I'm hyped for that if it ever comes out. Uh, Forza Horizon 4 is looking good. The last few of those were glorious. You think? Uh, I, 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 I was not excited about Forza at all. Like, Forza to me was always one of those, uh, you know, uh, there was Forza and then there was uh, Gran, Gran Turismo that for PlayStation. And, like, those were the games for me that were, like, this is the hyper-realistic, looks beautiful, um, driving simulators. And then you see Forza Horizon 4, and I don't know when Forza deviated, but... Now it's like, hey, how big of a ramp can you take? And you got to complete challenges with friends and that kind of thing. Like, I feel like they deviated from what Forza used to be to more of a kind of a need for speed kind of deal. I, I was really into uh, Burnout Paradise back in the day. And Forza Horizon reminds me a lot of that game. So I'm very fond of it. Yeah, others might not be, but uh, that's why we have two different series. We've got Forza Motorsport, Forza Horizon, that different yeah. strokes for different folks, such as they are. My biggest thing, though, uh, and this is going to sound weird, I really, really loved Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is a fantastic game. I love just sailing around, shooting people, taking their ships, robbing them blind. Wonderful. The one <laughs> thing it needed was more content. Now we've got more content. That's fantastic. Though in my case, the content was find other people and shoot them and take their stuff. But more other stuff to do is cool too. The the only thing that I've heard people complain, and trust me, people love to complain, about the Sea of, sea of Thieves expansion was that they did something they promised they would never do, which would be NPC, NPC ships. Uh, in the game, they always promised whenever you see a pirate ship, 
it was going to be another person and it was potentially something that, you know, you could either make a friend or you're going to have to fight and steal all their stuff like you do. Um, I think they said they're putting skeleton ships in, in the game. So now you have to worry about NPC ships and they're going to have multiplayer content where you actually legitimately have to team up with other crews to get PVE stuff done. Um, you know, whether or not that's a good thing, eh, who knows, but, uh, but yeah, they added more content. So I got CA for that. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and just breeze, th breeze through these because, hey, who knew that uh, an entire conference could not be summed up in one hour? Uh, let's go ahead and breeze through these. So, Bethesda, uh, Elder Scroll Blades, uh, essentially Elder Scrolls on mobile. Who who saw it coming? No one, that's who. So, that was pretty cool to see. The Elder Scrolls 6. So, that was um, a huge showstopper. What would you think about that? The Elder Scrolls 6, just a new, uh, you know, no more Skyrim. We have done our decade of Skyrim service. We're on to the next thing. Cool? You know, we can actually tie both this and Starfield in together because they were basically the same trailer, which is a, a, a title over a video. So, um, we don't know much of anything about either of them. Uh, people have speculated that the Elder Scrolls 6, the, the, the video that we saw, might take place in High Rock, the home of the Bretons, maybe? I don't know. Uh, we don't know anything. It's, it's just like Halo Infinite. It's a whole bunch of nothing, but we know it exists, so I guess that's cool. Uh, looking at Bethesda, mm -hmm. the things that really got me going, uh, there's a few of them. Uh, they announced DLC for Prey. It came out the same day. Uh, Prey Moon Crash takes Prey, which was a fantastic shooter from a little while back, a uh, really great psychological horror-focused shooter, uh, added on roguelike elements to it. So you can just keep playing, really get into that combat, dive into those systems, make it work. It's, it's, I've been playing it. It's wonderful. Other stuff from Bethesda. Rage 2. Rage didn't... Rage didn't sell. Nobody, nobody bought Rage. Rage didn't shake the earth like they thought it was gonna. And yet, here's a sequel. That's cool. Uh, Fallout 76. You know, Fallout 76 is the kind of game I want to get some people together, get a whole bunch of friends, just get in on a Discord, play the hell out of it. Looks great to me. Uh, Doom Eternal. More Doom. Have you played Doom? I, I have. Yes. Doom was great. More Doom. That's awesome. That's this E3. That's E3 2018. More of all the stuff you liked. Yeah. And let's see. So I believe you mentioned Fallout 76. Uh, you know, and, and that one, Fallout 76 was different because they said that they're going to have solo areas uh, that you can kind of retreat to. But it's going to be multiplayer and you know they made very clear if you feel like you want to play the entire thing solo your prerogative you can do that i think but fallout 76 is going to have multiplayer which is kind of different from uh you know just fallout titles that's uh something to really uh you know to really watch out for so there's that one ubisoft um let's see some of these uh oh of course everyone just dance 2019 great to hear uh the division two division two like the division still has that hardcore player base kind of like um ra uh, rainbow uh just like rainbow six siege uh the division two has their or the division has their player base so i bet you they were super excited that they get an expansion Absolutely. I mean, more. I, I love the division. First off, you know, was a, this was a game that I thought was really underrated. And I'm definitely not saying this because much like Sea of Thieves, it's got a lot of PVP and you can be a big old jerk face. I'm <laughs> definitely not what I'm saying. Um, division two. Let me tell you the actual reason I'm excited. Division two takes place in Washington, D.C. That's where I live. I actually get to like navigate the city and like know where I'm going and not need a map and it'll look all destroyed and ruined much mm. like it does now. It'll be great. <laughs> I, I, I don't like that. So let's see. There's another Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Uh, hey, you know, Assassin's Creed going back to its roots. Uh, let's see. So and and then let's see. Sony, uh, we didn't cover uh, The Last of Us 2, though. Uh, you know, it made a lot of noise. I think people love The Last of Us. And hey, The Last of Us 2 looked like uh, the main character, uh, you know, the girl actually came into her own and it's going to focus around her. So, uh, folks, wow, you know. This is, uh, this is unfortunate, but we're just not going to be able to cover everything. Everything from Death Stranding, because that would take an entire hour to parse apart, um, you know, to a lot more games. But everyone, we're flat out of time, and I think we did an okay job. Corey, thank you so much for coming on the show, and thank you for uh, talking about all these games with us. And hey, thanks for going out to E3 for us. 
hey, you know, I wish we could do more, but time is time, right? Yep, time is time. So everyone, again, uh, music means that we are flat out of it. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you felt like you missed any part of today's program, some of these we talk pretty fast. So, hey, go check out the podcast version of the show. And you can, of course, uh, hey, listen to everything that we have here to, uh, you know, everything we talked about here today. So until next time, folks, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday here on Computer America. Have a great day. Thank you so much. And uh, Corey, we'll catch you next month. Sounds good. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.